Bible, a lot of times the term revival is uh, so saved, but I think, you know, it's the church that needs waking up and revive. Amen. 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 On fire, you know, it's not the cold or lukewarm, but on fire, like he originally yes. provided and planned for us in the book of Acts and going out and doing those signs following, you know, and saving yes. about every service of believers. I was thinking about the Jeremiah and that scripture where he said, you know, he's talking to Jeremiah and talking to us. You know, he can't even run with the footmen in a time of peace. How are you gonna run with the, the horses in the time when the Jordan River is overflowing? And the Jordan River overflow in the time of harvest and Back then, and like here, the rivers locked, and the lions and the different ones were dangerous times to be around that area to be on the run. So I think what we went through last year, I think it's kind of a wake up call. I always call it check up from the neck up. You know, you know. I think Scripture says, see, see whether you are in the faith. And I think it's a barometer to see where we're at. If we're being worn out uh, running with a footman. And so a lot of, I believe, gave over to fear this last uh, season here. And I think it's a barometer for us. And I, I believe that's the part of the awakening of the church in that. Because he's going to have a bride. You know, in Revelation is talk about Satan comes down. And you know, he's time short, so he's angry. But they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word, and the testimony, and loved not their lives unto death. So he's raising up a fearless group of people, know who we are, sons and daughters, knowing definitely who he is, that we are kept by the power of God through faith. So just wanted to share that before we start sharing some of the of these glory stories and a lot of you heard uh, I see the probably new ones maybe a couple but I had a, a vision and it was the latter end of 2019 but it was a like a manhole cover is what I can describe it as and a big uh, boom is the, I believe the angelic taking off the lid to this and I found it later as a well and it popped off and I saw like a vapor going up to the clouds, you know, going back to the clouds, seeding the clouds. And the Lord told me in, in this that that's the old, the ones you can think of, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, uh, Maria Woodford Edders, and, and even in the 40s and 50s, Jack Coley, Allen, all of those great moves of God where God came down with his presence know this, those stories we're going to share some here about our trip but it seeded the clouds and I noticed the clouds got heavy until it came down and it was the latter rain coming down you know Joel 2 talks about the form of the latter rain coming in the first month it's talking about double portion so it's going to far exceed anything that's been seen I believe and you know the Bob Jones talks about the billion man harvest. So I believe that there's going to be a greater, even with the book of Acts or anything that Maria or any of those saw, it's going to be greater. And though he's going to have a remnant that's going to be fearless and, and yielded to the Holy Spirit and allow that refining as we heard in the words. Now his original pattern allow the gifts to be operational. Yes. And not just the one man doing everything, programs and such. And I believe this last season was for was supposed to have been part of that allowed to especially the leaders not to go back to normal way things were without no power of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I believe that our Sunday woken up to that. We'll start seeing things that 
the fear of the Lord will return when that book of Acts model, just like the Acts 5, you know, the lion thing, they, two of them end up dead. But anyway, praise the Lord, we're going to shift into our trip in Jesus Street Revival. I found this up well, right before the meeting before you all showed up, but this is a this is in outside of Pasadena. Our first place we end up going to is a there El Royal Seco there in, uh, outside of Pasadena, I think. But uh, they had worldwide camp meetings there. And that's the reason a while ago they actually had it in 2007. Some of the faith missions started camp meetings there. In Clear. 1907. Yes, that's a good show. But uh, <laughs> that's why I'm <laughs> But anyway, this uh, particular meeting we're going to talk about is in 1913. I, you know, Tommy wanted to go there, and I was really, because this is all about Tommy and Welchel. He was hoping he'd be able to make it tonight. That's a whole week. Uh, he's probably tired, and, and his uh, wife probably wanted to be with his wife if they went out. So, and uh, so anyway. He's probably a little tired, I'm sure, but uh, we got pictures of him. We'll honor him tonight and that to get his stories and such. Yeah. And, you know, part of the reason why we did this, um, to do this revival journey with Tommy, um, you know, we really feel like telling the old, old stories is key. And I was just reminded of the dream that. Um, Julie Myers had, I can't remember what, when it was, it, it's been some time ago, but she talked about the, the intercessors being in the, in the ambulances mm -hmm. and the angel, the beings came and they started, you know, telling the old, old stories. And it was by telling the old, old stories that it revived the intercessors. The intercessors were tired and worn out. They, they had prayed for so long and not seen the promises manifest. But it was by the angelic beings telling the in the dream, telling the old old stories of Maria Woodworth Anna and Amy Semple McPherson and Count Zinsendorf and the Moravians that it, it put hope, it broke that hope, deferred off the intercessors to be able to push again, to contend and to press for revival. And I feel like even this journey, it was a journey of honoring to Tommy. Um, we feel, you know, he's he's not in the greatest health it was it was a demanding journey for him to make but um we felt like this was the timing of the lord to do it so that it could be documented the stories that he has because we can't afford to lose them no Amen. yeah so he's got a new book coming out and jody which came a couple times here lives in kentucky she's helping him with that so and it'll be on sid roth and uh and so they made some documentaries somehow how what that's going to be a DVD or what it is. Yeah. But I was surprised he wanted to go to Royal Seiko where Maria was uh, in 1913 there. And so I got to do that, that kind of uh, telling stories with him. And that's kind of neat. But uh, he had some other, you know, uh, William Seymour was there in those meetings and he talked about uh, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny Bartleman. Bartleman. Frank Bartleman's son. He was seven, son. I think, at that time. But uh, we'll share a little bit more about that, perhaps. So, I got me some of that's going to do the Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I praise God. All right. So this is a 2013. We were in Deborah went to. We had a dean's meeting for WLI, Wagner Leadership Institute. He's a dean, so we go over there once a year and do a report, I guess, and it's a challenge church. And I wanted to go look up uh, where she was, you know, that, that park. And so we did a Google Earth and found the, this picture here. And now back then, it was all grass. They had a tent of 5,000 people. And I don't know how many people they had there, but they would, you know, back to you, they call it camp meetings. It really was people would camp out and have meetings. Yeah. You know, I went to Baptist church. They call it a camp meeting. It's just a week long of meetings, but it's actually that's where camp meeting comes from. 
And so at her meetings, there's so many tents, they would put up signs that says uh, Hallelujah Avenue or Praise the Lord Avenue or different ones so they could find their tent because a lot of those tents look alike so you couldn't find your way home. <laughs> so this is a picture that somebody did a drawing and that's how they, they find their way back to their own tent there. And so we went to find them. We pulled up to this park and we didn't know if that's a place or not back in 2013. And we parked the car, got out, and there's a bench right there, right straight in front of us. And there, it, there it is. Oh my goodness. We were in the right place. And so that's uh, spring of 1913. So that's me and Tommy sitting on that bench there. And we uh, went to one spot, couldn't find a bench. So I, I didn't think it was the right one. He goes, well, I think it is. <laughs> well, let's go a little further because I want to see that bench because I know. Tommy's GPS was a little off in places. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, the whole, like I said, there's a lot of land. That was freeway and stuff uh, back, you know, mm. 1913. There's a special crown in heaven for navigating in LA. <laughs> so, so, we, so that uh, guy there who came with it was Jody's son-in-law. Clifton, oh. very, very good, talented guy. He's going to do the World Series. Uh, the Olympics. Yes, that's World Olympics. <laughs> it's World. <laughs> it's the Olympics, Summer Olympics. Yes, he's going to Japan, so yeah. he's doing the basketball part. So he's he's uh, yeah. leaving about uh, two or three weeks, I guess. He'll be gone the whole month. So there's some more pictures. This, this is kind of a nice. We flow back and forth like a, you know, like a professional or something, you know. <laughs> and so it went quite no, well. No, that was just a strong anointing. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, done with the Royal Oh, are we done with Royal Session? Are we done with that? I think so. So Maria's time there, she, uh, I don't know how, many, how long it was, but uh, she's had a lot of, just two or three hours, she's used to going from nine in the morning to midnight sometimes. And so the uh, account goes that she would, as her time was up, you know, she didn't get a chance to pray for too many people sick. So she said, come up front, and they all come up. And as she's walking down the stairs off the platform, she would she, uh, apply the blood of the lamb, the blood of the lamb over those people, and they got healed just by doing that. To, she's used to just praying, you know. So that was, uh, and people got healed, so that's, but Tommy is telling us about Frank Barlow and son Johnny was seven years old and some other kids, but they saw Maria. They little kid was up her stage and was watching, and she was off the ground, about six inches on the ground, preaching off off the ground, you know. And they got saved. You would think, uh, you know, Frank's son would be saved by now, but they got saved. Apparently not. Got seen that. And okay, so I just feel like. You know that's that sounds really weird that that Maria would actually be off the platform, but you think of it, you know, the enemy cannot do anything original, mm -hmm. and you hear of those who are really tapped into the demonic, they levitate, mm -hmm. so that's a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Why not? So I just felt like I need I well, needed to share that and bring clarification. Phil, she was just in the spirit. I think Philip was translated or trans. Yeah, he was translated. Uh, transported. Uh, transported, yes. And that's being off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I had quite a few uh, night dreams, visions. So I could feel the anointing. I, so strong sometimes I wanted to wake up. That sounds weird, but like I couldn't I think my body could take it. But I was being transported. Uh, transported. And it's like a second story building. There's people leaning on the rail. Of being, and it was just uh, telling them to repent as I was flying by. <laughs> Some would fall down, repent, others they, you know, the Revelation that talks about, you know, uh, things that have happened there to get, you know, judgments coming, and there'll be people who curse, they won't repent. Yeah. You know, they'll curse God, so things but anyway. And you hear the story, A.C. Valdez and A.C. Valdez Jr., um, when Jr. was a junior, a child, uh, there's accounts of him actually walking out of his second story bedroom window. He was about five years old. He was about five years old. And his and sister told him, you can't do that. And he couldn't do it after that. 
Yeah. Uh, just kind of like that. He just walked out. But you could do it after that if you know. I think that we heard, heard about Peter walking on the water. Yeah. So we'll be finding that. So. Mm -hmm. So the next place, where do we go the next place? We went to William Seymour's grave. So um, that was, Tommy really wanted to go there and, and just kind of be at that place. And I gotta be honest, um, I'm not sure how many pictures Jack has of that. Um, so they're filming Seymour, there and he's telling the stories. Seymour's grave is actually the smaller one. And there's a plaque and- I got all that on. The next one. Okay. Yeah. So um, Tommy was actually very instrumental in getting that plaque placed because there was no memorial. Mm -hmm. um, and I gotta be honest, um, I was really sad when we came here. You know, we've gone to, and you know, we understand they're not there. You know, they're with Jesus, they're in heaven, but there's something about the honor. Yeah. And when there, there's an honor, you know, we don't go there to worship or any of that stuff. You've got to keep it in perspective and it can get out of balance, but there's an honor to it. And I just felt like, you know, we've gone to A.A. Allen's grave, we've obviously been to Maria Woodworth Edders, we've been to Branham's, um, Evan Roberts, Reese Howells. We've gone to all these gra grave sites, you know, and, and not to be morbid or anything, but just, you know, to a place of honor kind of thing. And I was so grieved in my spirit because of <coughs> what William Seymour's grave looked like. It was very, you can see, it's very unkept, it's very dead. And it hurt my heart. And it's not that, you know, it's that honor thing. It, I felt like it was like a lack of honor to this incredible father of the Pentecostal move, movement that had really been overlooked. And as I journeyed around the grave site, you can just see like this whole area is like dead. You know, it's very barren. There's, you know, there's. Well, it's, uh, they had a segregated. Blacks That's what I figured out. So, it was a segregated graveyard. As I started looking around all the grave markers, they had pictures on a lot of those. They're all black, and they were all all black. So I feel like that was it was actually a segregated, which is so. He was so. All of his meetings were integrated, and to see you know remember he started his journey where he wasn't allowed in the meetings because he was black. And then to end that he would be buried in a grave, in a segregated graveyard. Just kind of like hurt my heart, but mm. anyhow. You can you can kind of see. So what's that picture done? That's Bonnie Bray. That's, Bonnie Bray. that's, that's what it looked Bonnie like Bray. Oh my gosh, that's Bonnie the Bray. The roof must have been changed on that. So I found that uh, just a few hours before we came. That's what it looked like. But the, I forget how many times the front porch had to be replaced because there'd be so many people on there, you'd fall in. <laughs> oh, wow. They had another picture, it's kind of cartoon drawing, I think, but they had to show all the people lying down the street. Wow. And, and that was really where Azusa started. It was at Bonnie Bray. So that's the next day, I think, we went there. Right? Yeah, so that's what it looks like now. And it's yeah. um, restored, yeah. it's, it's taken care of. There is an amazing lady there who has lived there. Oh my gosh, she must have lived there for almost, she doesn't live there anymore, but she actually at one point actually lived in that house while it was being renovated. Um, but she is an amazing gatekeeper. She's a, a Korean woman, Sister Soul, and uh, she is a gatekeeper. I'm here to tell you, she just stewards that thin place and so, i'm telling you there's still a thin place so fortunately we had a connection because uh jody could find the phone number she had nobody had answer or anything else we got all the way over everyone so we had people praying and stuff but we dave collins he's part of the wli yeah so we so were we able, him. able to get in you aren't you know sister soul just really guards that place you know you have to take your shoes off before you go in no pictures inside no pictures or recordings or anything but, inside but this time because of covid they had yellow tape on all the rooms you couldn't go all the rooms 
do things prettily like four we had 45 minutes uh, yeah that's all we had wow. which we did over, over so we did over. more outside <laughs> but um you know it was just so amazing for Tommy to be able to go back in there and to in that place be able to tell those revival stories and to recount that and you could just tell that he was just so touched by it and um, there was some gals waiting oh there's Tommy yeah, a good picture there isn't that good yeah. that's what the sign looks like they have heard. the comforter has come that was the song that they sung so these two ladies there, we got to, Tommy and I got to, I'll share them a little bit before we went in, but these two here, we got to pray over them, me and Tommy, and then Jody did, and I think I don't know if you got in on I, that. I got in on that. They, they didn't have a uh, appointment, and they thought they could slide in with, with us. <laughs> but uh, we got to minister to them, then these uh, black uh, sister of her kids, uh, I don't know her name is, that one there. Sophia. Sophia. Uh, we came out, our 45 minutes was way up. We came out and they were down there, and so she wanted us to pray for her. Tommy and I to pray for her, <laughs> and she got rocked. She got rocked. <laughs> and then uh, the other ones got to. She was Shonda on a bobo. So when she finally, got, <laughs> so she finally got in there, you can hear her praying tongues in the whole neighborhood. I was like, wow. Uh, so and, she stepped inside there. And she had her two daughters with her. You can see one of the the older one and just precious girls. And they had made quite a journey to come and had the appointment. So it was just such a, a divine appointment to connect with them. It was way fun. There's the little one. Oh, yeah. um, and they were just heating it up as Tommy was sharing and praying with them. And they were. It was. It was a definite divine set up for them so it was way cool that's my new phone i got just the day before i think before we left <laughs> so we got i got to film with some of that there now yeah, so we went to a caesar so street that the next day we went to, after that was that wednesday it was after that we went same day oh same day that was it it was wednesday, wednesday. <laughs> so that's uh you could pull too many pictures off they wouldn't let you pull them off so anyway, this is what Azusa Street. It was a warehouse, I think. Yeah. Anyway. So you know the outpouring began at Bonnie Bray's house, though, and they got where they outgrew it, and, and they so they got to uh, move there. So with William Seymour is Jenny Moore, yeah. who eventually became William Seymour's wife. But Jenny was the one who, and they still have the piano in Bonnie Bray. Um, and she sat down at the piano. She'd never played before. And she got off the floor. Really. Yeah, she got off the floor and sat at the piano and just started being able to supernaturally play the piano. So then she became the worship leader for all the prayer meetings at Bonnie no, Bray. And I say, I want some of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, wow. So they, um, she ended up Jenny ended up marrying. Hope, hope and Tommy is here where you can tell who all those. Yeah, she, he, could, of he could definitely tell who all those were. kind of blurry. So what's this? We're battle of tongues. Yeah, so that's, uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, that, was that outpouring in, uh, when did that start? That's the date. Topeka? April. Oh, April, um, it was April 6th, I think. Well, that's one of the, didn't show the whole paper, but that's kind of the headline there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it started just a few days before that. And so all the only things left there is Zeus Street, the that. That's it. That's it. The Assembly of God said that, that it is their greatest regret that they allowed the Azusa Street mission to be torn down. Oh. Yeah, so... I don't know if Tommy had anything to do, but the other ones were historical places that they can never tear them down. Yeah, they're historical places now, so they can't touch them. But this is what it is. It's just a, uh, I, th I thought it was pretty cool they had a tent there. I, I went under there for a while, so I'm like, I'm not sure what, what it's there for. But it had a nice stage, and it was a tent. Yeah, and so that's that where the, cool. the, mission. the mission place would have been sitting right there. So Tommy's telling me just right 
Yeah, they're right close to where that's uh, where she where uh, Jerry is. Yeah, Cliff is sitting, and then just a little bit over is where Seymour had they had that uh, shoebox on his head because they had a little plaque there. Yeah, and that's why you hear the accounts of William Seymour. He would go into the mission and he'd be under a, a box and he'd pray in tongues and sometimes it would be up to you know five hours or even more until he really felt like he had a word of, from the Lord to be able to release and everybody was just praying and worshiping at the same time so but that's what out, he would that's do the, and that's when he came, the out. Power came out that's when the power came out so this is a grapefruit tree that was back in the Sousa Street days and it's still alive but it's you can yeah. see it's pretty rough shape at the top there it had grapefruit mm. that's still, uh, still going still bearing fruit yeah. you know, fruit remains yeah and there's another <laughs> picture there I squeezed one in of us <laughs> wiping up cool. okay so this is the next day now we couldn't find phone number in it oh this was is like really tough and that's we went there the first day I think and and uh, new management or something and Tommy was heartbroken he didn't think oh my gosh he was heartbroken because he didn't think he was going to be able to like it, you know we had believing and praying thank you intercessors who got that message we need favor yeah. to get in because we didn't do that the first day but this ended up being Thursday right the day before we left so yeah. And we understand that somebody used to live on that same street. We did. <laughs> that's what, that's uh, what Tommy was yeah, telling us. Yeah. So, I was like, couples of your leadership. <laughs> <laughs> leadership was right in this area. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, it's like you said. I was like, seriously? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's Pishka. So you want to share about Pishka? Or? I'll let you. Okay. So actually, this was founded in 18... Uh, they started building it in 1896 and finished it in 1897. I think that's the right date. It took two years. It took two years to build, and um, it was a complex. And what was the guy's name who? I can't remember his name. Who started it? Oh, I can't remember. Wish Tommy was. There's a lot of names with that. There was a lot of names, but. Um, it was a mission where they would literally go and get the homeless. They'd go down to Skid Row, and they'd get the homeless, wow. and they'd bring them in. And that was how Tommy ended up coming into Pishka with the Azusa Street Saints. So this was a mission and a house of prayer even long before Azusa Street. Mm -hmm. But then when the, the old Azusa Street Saints, this was where they retired to, and this is where they lived in their latter years, but they were still going out and doing ministry work on Skid Row, and that was where they found Tommy. Tommy was ha was homeless. Yeah, he was 17, I guess. I thought he was 17, yeah. but I heard him talk about he was 17. They brought him in. He stayed there six years with him. So he stayed with them six years, and the, the original saints from Azusa Street told all the old, old stories until Tommy could tell them as good as they could, but... You know what he was sharing with us while he was there and you know we were doing the interview and everything was that's all of us at the gate we we we, had, we brought some tag alongs around which is yeah. amazing somebody got a hold of uh tommy wrote him a ladder was that what it was mm -hmm. and uh want to know if they can come to you and i'm thinking you know i've had that before we have ends up being flaky people <laughs> and uh, so she was flaky. She's one of us. She was awesome. But quite a surprise. And she's been. Her grandparents went to one of the church that was founded out of the Azusa Street Revival. Mm. So I mean, she's got some heritage in in that too. So she's been doing a lot of research on Azusa Street, and um, she found where Frank Bartleman lived, and the. Tommy, we were trying to find this, the place where uh, William Seymour had originally come to, kind of the Pasadena area. So that was like way cool. But when Tommy was telling the stories, he was sharing about all these ministers that preach in this tiny little, they called it a tabernacle, on the grounds of Pishka. 
And I mean, he said, he talked about how Tommy Hicks, who was, you know, the catalyst for the first Argentinian revival. And that guy that started it for gospel too, his name? Yeah. Yeah, Demas. Yeah, Demas. Yeah. It was Demas's father would come, and Demas was there, the Shakirians, William Branham. I mean, Tommy just starts rattling off all these names of all these people who ministered in this chapel while Tommy was there. Wow. I mean, it was just amazing, yeah. and it's just like, oh my wow. gosh. And Tommy yeah. Hicks prophesied over yeah, Tommy. Yeah, he, uh, Tommy Hicks prophesied over Tommy. He had this this vision, and, and I think it was a vision vision or a dream about the revival that were coming and the giants that would, would be the carriers of that, and he prophesied over Tom, Tommy when Tommy was like 17, 18 years old, wow. that Tommy would be part of that revival army, mm-hmm. and that Tommy would see it. So, you know, just amazing. You don't know who Tommy Hicks is, look him up. I just looked him up a couple years ago when he was in Montana, seeing who was there in Montana. Mm-hmm. And I, he's part of the Argentine revival where the, I think the president, whatever, left, opened up the stadium of 50,000 people. Yeah. I mean, it was the first one, and then Ed Silvoso came in afterwards um, about 20 years later. But just... Um, amazing just to you know you could just see the joy in Tommy and you know he talked about he pointed out a window in in the main building and he says you know that's where Marlene and I lived that was our apartment that's where we had our honeymoon and you know just these beautiful stories and you know as Jack had said, he was heartbroken when he didn't think we were going to be able to get into Pish because we couldn't get a hold of anyone. And he was just so grieved. I mean, you could tell he was just heartbroken. So we're just praying that God would open the way to do it. And when, when he got there, it's almost like you got the sense it's like he was home and he got to, to, got to go back to those places and it just stirred up all those memories in him and it was amazing when you know he was doing the the interview the stories that you know he would share and you could see him just come alive and it was it was just so cool to and such an honor and a privilege that we just got to kind of be a fly on the wall mm-hmm. and and to hear that it was pretty amazing okay there's the actual house and Yeah, that was. Oh, that's where they stayed in it. Talked about the men's dorms and the women's being separated. I took a selfie with one of those. Yeah, I did notice you were taking selfies. Those are the original chimneys and all that. But uh, so this door here, that red door there, was the cafeteria hall. So you got to go in there. Praise the Lord. This is the original pan- piano they played in there and the original tables. There. That's Brian. Yeah. <laughs> he just quietly went out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you could feel they had um, benches from the chapel that would have been on the tabernacle when Tommy would have been there. Wow. Wow. And we're thinking it's like, I wonder if all this, because the people who own it now, I don't believe I believe this. And the little gal that's, um, she was the kind of the liaison for the property manager. Um, we had a real cool opportunity to be able to really minister to, to her. And she says, this is my favorite property to come to. She said, I always just feel so much peace here. And we, we started kind of pressing where she was. And she says, well, you know, one of her parents was Catholic and the other one was Buddhist. and." She said, so I believe in a higher power, and, you know, I like coming here because I can get in one in peace. And That's <laughs> kind of funny. I, I don't know who she was. I've seen her stop a few times and listening, and he was sharing about the, about the, the plus, he, as I pronounce it, uh, had that Catholic uh, yeah. uh, outpouring there. Mm-hmm. He was sharing about all that. He was sharing about the nuns that would come <laughs> and pray in tongues. <laughs> so she said, I thought, well, that's a kind of orchestrated, wasn't it? Now? <laughs> it was fun, but she was like hanging on every word. So we had yeah. just a really cool opportunity to be able to minister to her. And she's kind of got some decisions she needs to make in her life. Her name is Kathy. Yeah. And uh, we got to pray for her. And 
she she just was like hanging back and then it's like when we started oh would you like to go in here would you like to come out here and it's like yes we think we could we was over our time we were way over way so over our time and we lost Tommy I don't know yeah just the do's and don'ts we're supposed to be I think but yeah but we, off. he was off doing but it was just it was just so cool to be able to to be there but then as we were on the grounds and we couldn't miss Tommy and me on the bench right um, there's the chapel on the left there, and we couldn't get a hold of any. You know, all the phone numbers were gone. It was crazy. And then when we got there, there was actually like a little A-frame sign with the church, and it's obviously changed hands. So we we're able to get the website and the phone number. So I started as we were on campus, um, reaching out to them, and the pastor was in Hawaii, and um, you know, I kind of said who we were and what have you. And he said the other person that has the key will, didn't take his key to work, so he couldn't let us in. And it's like, you know, they were very apologetic. But I feel like we're really supposed to reach out and, and connect with them more because I'm not totally sure they realize what they have. Yeah. And to be able to at some point even go back there and there's, there's like no plaques, no nothing that would, other than the sign at the front that says Pishka House of Prayer, yeah. you would have absolutely no idea what happened on those grounds. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, they were still, Tommy said that they were doing signs and miracles even before the Azusa out, out pouring wow. at Pishka. Wow. And um, so I mean, a hundred years of stuff happening there Mm -hmm. and the history and I was walking the grounds and I started was chatting with Kathy about some different things and you know who takes care of things and one thing and another and I just felt like Holy Spirit prompted me to ask her I said you know you've heard the stories now because you you've been here and you've heard hard Tommy and we explained who he was and showed them a picture of his book and what have you and I said, you know, there, there really isn't any monument or anything. I said, could we possibly purchase a bench and put a plaque on the bench to commemorate mm. what was here? Mm. And she went, oh, you probably could. So then she started giving me tips on, on how to get a hold of the owners. So we're really gonna pray into pursuing that but I also feel even with the, the church that is there, as I said, I got we've got no idea if they really understand the treasure that they have. Mm. But I could see even in the building that it really needs some renovation, it needs some work that needs to be painted and things like that. And you know, in view of the fact that I've had multiple dreams about restoring churches in the last week. You know, it's like, okay, Lord, you know, is that something that you'd call us to be a part of somehow? And yeah. I talked to her, I said, could we bring a work crew to come and work the land? And because they said they've had such a difficult time because of COVID and people being able to get on mm. to come in and get, even get vendors to come in and work on the property as a whole. It's now affordable housing. And there was a lot of retirement people there and what have you. Tommy said that the upper part's an attic and it had all the crutches and wheelchairs and all the things after people got healed and stored up in there. And he's asking them, is it still up there? She didn't know if it were or not. But that, talk about that stained glass, that square up there is worth a lot of money now, I guess. Because mm -hmm. it was way before then, I guess. The, the original building. So, yeah, so Tommy got to tell all the stories of the, of the Azusa Street yeah, Saints. The uh, house there, wait a minute, it says Yodeman's. Yodeman, Yodeman. I guess. <laughs> I think that's how he was a brain surgeon doctor and, and uh, he started doing Yoakum. Yoakum. That's it. Yoakum. Mr. Yoakum. That's his house there. And, uh, he was the one that founded it. That house. Mm. Yeah, so he started living in signs and wonders. Mm. How cool was that? Yeah, he's cool. Oh, and this part. How did that get there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, now we know. Who put that there? Who did do this PowerPoint? <laughs> yes, you know, I had an idea of going to find some kind of dessert and coffee. So, what was that called? The pie hole? It was called the pie hole. 
So I got the, the one up there is key lime pie. And I think she got an apple. I got an apple, apple pie. Apple pie was the ice cream. 30 bucks for this pie. Oh, oh my word. Pie. Wow. Yeah. Two, two, two pieces of pie. Welcome to Pasadena. Two pieces of pie and a cup of coffee each. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we, I forget one of those days we were going to go to the ocean there where Seymour would baptize people. Oh boy, LA traffic is an hour and what to get there. 45 minutes. And we got there, it was just so crowded. And, you know, we had to have Tommy in a wheelchair to get him around places. And as a wheelchair doesn't have foot rest, you know, so you have to lift his legs up or kind of walk. It was, it was a labor of love. So we thought, well, Probably know where the park close and I don't get in the sand and all that stuff. Yeah. So we turn around an hour or something back. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ocean. We got to see it. Yeah, yeah I guess <laughs> you did, didn't we? We <laughs> did. So we just really wanted to share with you the journey. We know that you guys were on it and praying for us. And, you know, I just feel the, the legacy and we, we felt the, the sobriety of doing this and how important it was to be able to document this because we can't afford to lose those, you know, not that we idolize them, but to remember those yeah. old, old stories, yeah. you know, we, to put them yeah. into remembrance, it's an important thing, that's part of that testimony. And the story, you know, the book of Acts is just, and we're a continuing story, we better get our stories going in. here, you know, so that's the book of Acts, those stories live on. Yeah, talking in the book of Acts, we did, sneak in and watch on Facebook today the sermon, um, the pastor when we were in Warrior, oh, Alabama, yes, yes. Wow. and his teaching on the book of Acts and yeah. really rallying his people and, you know, just taking them, you know, we're going off to this kind of thing. And he says, I went to my granddaughter and he said, hey, are you still praying in tongues? And she went, yes, Grandpa. <laughs> Yay! Because so remember, she received that that night when we were ministering. The kids oh, got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Him, yeah, yeah, hey. Well, he's teaching like right on. Yeah, it's talking about how the church got off of Constantine and how Luther, you know, brought back you know salvation mm -hmm. by works but by faith through Jesus. And, yeah, he's and preaching just, it. So he's laying it out there. He's laying it out, and they're going after it. So that's good. Yeah, I'll talk to him sometime. Yeah. For sure. So how do we want to wrap this package up, my darling? Well, you can put on a little music here. Okay, I'll go do that. The Lord's going to have a people. People that believe. said that originally, believing believers or something like that. When we start doing business, uh, we'll be here Tuesday for prayer at 6. And I got something I really want to do. I'm not going to tell what the movie is, but we're going to have a movie night Thursday night. I checked it out yesterday. It's going to be a great time. We can invite some people. We're going to have a fun night. I think we'll probably pray regular time but instead of having a meal I think we're gonna have like a popcorn and like a movie night, you know? Oh, cool. And uh, so it'll be a five prayer five to six and six o'clock we'll have a movie night. I ain't gonna tell you but I tell you what, it's gonna help you build your faith if I was weeping. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's all I'll say about that. So I think it's gonna be a good fun night. It's good for us to have fun. And be building us up in the faith. And then this is a little bit for our visitors. This is a little bit of an unusual service. So if you just kind of jumped in with us, and we just welcome you and glad you're here with us. I don't know if we can fit in when we play that song. <laughs> we can come up here. Those, no pressure. If uh, you don't want to, there's no pressure. No shame. Yeah. We can come mm -hmm. up in like a oblong circle or something here. 
You know how we did it somehow, like a little yeah. curry. Just the pipe. Pray in the spirit just for a moment. Yeah. Just for a moment. Just, just the Lord wants to do. Heal down. 
We just declare right now any hearing loss done here in Jesus' name. We declare hearing loss and for restoration to hearing right now. I speak to the deaf, the dumb spirit even in Jesus' name. Right now, for the very also comprehensive in Jesus' name. travel down this line any longer. We break it off right now, Jesus. Kokoli ka. Kokoli ka. Kokoli ka. Kokoli ka. spirit of not hearing God. We break that spirit off right now. Break off the hindrances of Satan's enemy voice that's killing your life. That hearing spirit. We just declare this is, this is the revelatory house for you. Yeah. Or you can yeah. speak to your children and they will obey. Yeah. Speak to your children and they will obey. We speak to your eyes. I speak to my eyes. You can be healed eyes. You know, line up what heaven says. I think it was Moses, his eyes were not him. Is that correct? So why can't it be for us? So I declare, Lord, that you're healing our eyes. We don't want to visualize, Lord. The scales will come off. Lord, we just declare that, that you're giving your gift tonight, Lord, to fresh and anew. That you put the members in the body as it pleases you, and you give them gifts. Lord, we just declare there's an unlocking of some gifts that get locked up in you. We declare they're being unlocked tonight. Just for the body, the health of his body. He is the head. We declare an unlocking right now in Jesus' name. Those gifts that you allow the enemy to put on the shelf. We say they're off the shelf now in Jesus' name. <laughs> and I even speak to the optic nerve where there has been trauma, even to the optic nerve that has hindered the vision. Yes.
sons and daughters. The Father sent your people out to spread joy. Alright, be blessed and stay healed. Yes. 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 Yes.